Hey everybody, what's crack a -lackin? Yes, yes, yes. On the advice of a good friend of mine, I'm going to get back on the horse. Guys, I've had a lot going on. I'm not going to really get into it on this video. Um, I'm going to do a little edited video here for you guys to give you an update on these big flares that are happening. We've got a hyperactive sunspot, but I'll be going live later on today also. Um, and I may even put another one in the middle of those because we've got so much going on. Like I said, guys, when I'm not here, even when the big stuff is happening, I'm going to come out here and talk about it for you guys. Okay, um, so just kind of bear with me here. I'm going to get back on the horse and uh, going to start riding, I guess. But as you guys can see, you can see that we got flares on both sides. Now, this is actually kind of, you know, I say it all the time. The sun can do what it wants, when it wants, how it wants to do it. Um, you know, I can't really say it any more clearer than that. But we had a bunch of sunspots, uh, big sunspots, that went across the face of the sun, earth facing. Didn't hardly do anything. Now we only have just very few, and this one is really, he it is just, yeah, it's hyperactive, and it just started uh, about 24 hours ago with an M flare, but now we've got two, two big X-class flares and two M-class flares, and the ones that are coming from the left side sunspot, those are Earth-facing, and, and Lasco C2 is not updating the coronagraphs right now. Um, I'm waiting on some of that data to come in to see if it actually did fire CMEs at us I'm not sure yet but we did get a bit of a radiation uh, increase and as you can see here that's what you're seeing with the solar proton flux right there it went up and went down this did not come guys this didn't come from over here okay didn't come from this one over here it came from this one this one's rotated off it fired an X flare just out of the blue um <laughs> and, and it went across the danger zone right it's in the position of the z danger zone so the protons were connected to the sun over here magnetically so the protons got picked up from that and it and it actually magnetically brought it back to our system and hit us with an increase of radiation now it's nothing to worry about so don't worry about that it's not going to affect you me or any or anybody that you know okay it didn't even get to s1 rating s1 rating really there's not much to talk about there anyway with a radiation storm it just simply was not that big of a deal but what i'm going to be watching today is this one right so as you can see there guys this is uh not a it's not a small one guys these are this is a this could end up being a pretty decent <laughs> hit okay if it did fire anything at us now remember last year we had the big super super solar storm right right around this time of year um, it is kind of funny how that all lines up and everything, and there is some science behind that. Um, obviously, it's not the exact same day at the exact same time, but it is around the same time frame, and there are reasons for that. And I'm not going to get into that right now, but I just want to give you guys a, a quick update on this so you guys understand what's happening, right? So, if I go down here, and there's also something else I want to mention as I pass through this, you can see this. This is a corona hole. This corona hole wet has been across the face of the sun nine times. Okay, it hasn't went away. So it's been in front of us nine times. And the last time it was in front of us, I think it gave us like two solar storms. They were low level, so nothing really to be too concerned about. Um, but yeah, we had all that happening. So um, also, guys, those power outages, they line up. Some of those line up perfectly with some of the, the low, low level uh coronal uh not coronal <laughs> yeah getting back on the horse give me a second um the low level geomagnetic storming that we got they were like g1s one of them got to a g2 but they the power outages happened at the exact moment that they hit so it's hard for me to kind of discount that especially when it did it more than once okay um so i, I just i i personally my opinion i think it had something to do with it I'm not going to go into exactly what it is, but you can look at the total electron content, which is this one here. And if you were to go back to that date, you would see certain things. Just a massive increase. And, there, and again, a whole lot of science behind it. But um, those low-level storms should not be doing that to us. That is not a normal thing. So, you know, I think we need to start looking at different things. I don't know what those things exactly are. I know some of those things. We're going to take a look at that later on as they happen. But, you know, we just got to be paying attention a little bit more right now, I think. 
Um, and as you can see here, guys, this right here is the deabsorption region. Um, we, what you're going to see here, this is the flares hitting. Okay. So we had, there is the M flare, and then right there is the X flare. Okay. That's the second X flare. The first M flare is back too far in time. I can't show it to you on this on this model. But that was the, that was the second uh, X flare, and it was actually more powerful than the, the first one. Um, and then there's that second M flare. Now, d you know, what's it going to do? Well, guys, it was an R3 radiation storm. Radio blackout storm, I'm sorry. Um, and what that means is there were some radio blackouts with it. That's pretty much all that that means. But, and they would have happened in these areas. That's why we look at this. Okay? Um, and they, there most certainly was. I did see some reports of some radio blackouts in these areas. Now, I will say this too. The x flare happened in a region that there's a lot of people. There is a lot of people there. That doesn't always happen. Okay? A lot of times we see them over the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. Obviously, our planet's 70% water. So, that makes sense, right? So, usually it affects mariners more than anything. Um, and, you know, ham radio operators, any kind of navigational systems, this will mess with, okay? And, and right now, guys, I mean, the effects are probably gone right now. Let's see here. Well, you can see a little bit up here on the north, but nobody's up here. Not, not definitely no high population up there. But you can see we got a little bit of, you know, energy hanging around there. But I don't think it's going to be messing with radios too much right now. Now, like I said... Guys, this, this thing became hyperactive, like, really, really quickly. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, the continuum here. Let me uh, pause that, and I do want to take this back here. And we will take it to the colorized magnetogram. Now, what I'm going to show you is the magnetic polarity and the mixing of those magnetics, okay? This is why this thing is hyperactive, Okay, it ain't necessarily the size of this thing. So let me, um, I'm just going to pause it. I'm going to do this and zoom in. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay. And when you start seeing the reds and blues mixing. Okay. Well, it ain't going to let me go that far, I guess. Uh, let me back it out some. Okay. But you guys get the gist there. See the reds and the blues are really getting close and they're starting to mix. When that happens, those are reconnection events and that's when it flares right so if i was to run this back to yesterday let's just go back uh let's go back two days just for whatever reasons here well let's even go back to like let's go back to the ninth let's go back to the ninth and i'm only going to run it for one day because i really just want one image here to show you um and show you this big sunspot we had um excuse me here guys just for one second my mouth was getting dry. Sorry about that. So, sorry about that flashing, too. <laughs> but this sunspot was huge. Okay? That was a very, very large sunspot. Now, do you see how the reds and the blues are, are really just not really intermingling until it got over here? It actually looked a lot like this one the whole time it was in the front. So, when they're that far away, you don't get the reconnection points. Not typically. That's why this gigantic sunspot didn't do anything until it started mixing over here. Um, and if that had happened right in front of us, yeah, that was harboring some energy that could have really, really, you know, shot some things. And when it got over here, it did. Big X flare. So, um, that, and again, remember, our connection to the sun is over here. And it does fluctuate north-south, you know, up and down a little bit. And even, you know, around to the face or the far side just a little bit. Um, so, if, if that ejection goes across that connection line the protons in that ejection it will grab a hold of them and then it comes back on that line back to earth okay that's how we get those radiation storms when they fire off here now when they fire off in the front it's as simple as saying hey it's looking right at us it threw it threw protons at us that's simple okay um but what can we expect guys you know this is a strong um flare g3 so, you guys can read this. I'm not going to read it for you. Um, a voltage conditions. I've read these things a thousand times. Um, you know, and I do think they need to, to change these a little bit because I think that it's not taking as much. Um, I'm sorry, that's, that's even the wrong uh, 
scale there. I want the R scale down here, the radio blackout scale, right here. Okay, wide, wide area blackout, high frequency radio communications, loss of radio contact for about an hour on the sunlit side of the Earth. Okay, flares typically affect the side, the day side of the planet. Okay, low frequency navigation signals degraded for about an hour. That's what you're going to get from that, right? You know, and I and I know that you know a lot of times we come out here and we show you guys those things, and it does seem like we're putting it out there like it's a little bit more of a big deal than what it actually is but when the terms of space weather this is a big deal okay and that's why i'm saying that um it's the same as you know like a weather caster just ignoring a thunderstorm warning that kind of thing you know what i mean you a, a thunderstorm warning is a big deal when you're not when you haven't had a thunderstorm in a month you see what i'm getting at so that's why that becomes a big deal now when we start talking about r4 and L r5 radio you know radio blackouts we're talking about massive flares. X20 for the R5. And again, guys, I think that these need to be redone a little bit, adjusted. I don't know how much or and, and in what way, but I do think we're getting effects at lower level eruptions now here on our planet. So I don't think the, the sun's doing anything stronger than what it typically does. Our system's weaker. That's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Um, so again, that one went ahead and rotated off, so we ain't got to worry about that one anymore. That one's pretty much gone unless it fires another one over there. Could increase our radiation. Um, but, yeah. So we're going to be paying attention to this. I, I can't show you a whole lot more because Lasco C2, well, it just updated. Let's see what it gives us here. This is Lasco C3. It's a zoomed out version. There's that white circle. That's an actual disc there that blocks the main light of the sun. And why it does that, and it needs to do that so we can get an image at all. And I say that every time, every video. But you can see how it jumps time. Right here, watch. Right here. If I go, let's see here, 6, 6, and then 7, 7, and then, let's see here, 8. So it jumps about 4 to 5 hours. We don't have that data. Now, sometimes these the satellites will actually put themselves into safe mode when big things are happening. It's to protect the equipment, okay? Um, and typically, the here in a couple days, they'll go back and add that data back because they're able to extract it the, the safe way, okay? It's still picking up the readings and things. It just can't be in a mode during all that. When that's happening, because it's out there without any protection from Earth's magnetic field, it's out in front of us about a million miles closer to the sun. So it's kind of like an early warning thing, but it's, you know, but it has no protection out there. So that's why it goes into safe mode sometimes. And I'm not saying that's why that this happened, it, but there is a chance that that is what happened to that. Especially if we got the radiation storm, it was picking up certain readings. Um, don't forget there's a human element involved here too, that they could shut it off for a second too, um, just to protect it. If they think it needs to be done. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, we also had some pretty big earthquakes, guys. Um, these earthquakes have been kind of, well, yeah. You guys heard about the four-pointer down here. Um, Naples had a big one today over here. Um, and that's a highly populated area over there, too. That's why that, that's a pretty big deal over there. 6-4, that's not so un uncommon down near Tonga. Um, and again, guys, I'm not the earthquake guy, but I did want to show you that. Why are we seeing those? Well... Guys, these coronal holes, every time they're facing Earth, we get an increase in earthquake activity. Um, I don't know the exact science behind all that, but I do know every time I see a coronal hole, we get an uptick in seismic activity. Whether it be, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes starting to act up again, or all the above. Okay? That just happens. Also, we had a bit, see this filament right here? We had one here laying across the front. And it, it ejected off yesterday, and I'll show you guys that later on today during a live stream. Um, it'll, and it'll probably be this evening when I do that. But when you see that, that big, I mean, it was a big one. Now, I think it went mainly north of Earth. I don't think it's coming at us, but it was a large one. And I, and I will show it to you, um, just not right now. Okay, did I miss anything I wanted to show you right now? Um, but yeah, so I will be back later on today and I am back on the horse. Thank you to my, uh, much wiser than me, uh, friend of mine. Um, you know who you are. Thank you for that advice. Um, 
And there may be a change of format here. I've been doing work on the channel, even though I haven't been doing the live streams. Uh, I've been working on some technical stuff. I've actually got the fiber optic company coming tomorrow to install fiber optics. Um, that'll allow me to do a better show because it'll be faster. I'll be able to you know, do a higher quality video for you guys. Um, plus, you know, it's got a 99%, um, it, it very seldom goes out, okay? Uh, I think it's like a 0.1% outage <laughs> percentage for us. So, yeah, so if it goes out, it'd be really odd. The, the, the fiber optics are underground, so they got to dig in my yard and all that mess. So, but as you can see here, guys, here are those flares one more time right there. I do want to take you back over here one last time. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to call it a day here in just a second. I'm not going to keep you here very long on this one. Um, I'm planning on, just to let you guys know, I'm planning on doing a five-minute video in the morning for you guys. It's going to be an edited video like this. But it's just going to be space weather conditions just straight to the point, okay? Um, and I'm going to do that, and then I'm probably going to, I'm going to try to do a live stream at night also. All right, uh, so you're going to see me probably just about every day from here on out. Um, there may be a day or two. My daughter's graduating this month, so there's probably going to be a day or two, and I'll let you guys know when that happens. Uh, but I may still pop on in the morning and for a four- or five-minute show just to give you updates. If something big happens, I will be here. This is the first really big thing that's happened in the past few weeks. So um, just so you guys understand that. As you can see there, guys, that's what's happening. So. All right, guys. Well, I will see you later on tonight. And uh, as always, God bless. Yahusha saves. And you can drink this Kool-Aid.